that? All right. Brother Frank, I want to say thank you. Thank you so much, Brother Frank, for the great uh, uh, introduction. And uh, as everybody now knows, I'm one quarter part Jew. And uh, that just means that when I go to the restaurant with my friends, I don't pay. And uh, so, hey, I just want you to know uh, that the best part about being one quarter Jew is that when I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior, I became 100% Jew. Amen. And uh, so I'm now part of the family of God, and we're excited about that and uh, what God's doing uh, here. And I'm excited about being part of this online youth conference. I'm so excited that Brother, Fr Brother Frank asked me to come and do this. And uh, man, some of the speakers you guys have already heard have been amazing, I know. And I pray that the, the Lord will be uh, able to bless uh, through what you hear uh, from to me tonight. Uh, as I, as uh, Brother Frank probably already told you, my name is John. I'll give you a little bit of my testimony. I grew up in a Christian home. My dad was a pastor, a church planter. As a matter of fact, he started a church in uh, California. And uh, I grew up in his uh, underneath of that. I went off to Christian College at Pensacola Christian College. I uh, met my wife there. And I've served over 20 years in the youth ministry before God called me to be a pastor. And so I want you to know, young people, that I love teenagers. I love teenagers. And I'm so excited to be a part of this online youth conference. I'm so excited that God has given me this. We've been praying about it, and we are ready to go. And I want you to know this, this evening that as we uh, open the Word of God, I want your hearts to be ready for the Word of God. So I want you to make me a promise tonight that if God speaks to you, that you will do this, that you will listen, and uh, that you will obey the Word of God tonight. And uh, if you are within the sound of my voice tonight, and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, can I tell you that my ultimate goal is that you know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. That you come to know Him in an intimate, personal way. And you know, if you're a Christian here tonight, I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you young people. I want to encourage you to, to get it into the Word of God. I want to encourage you to be a, a, a people of prayer. And I want to encourage you to be a people of doers. Go out and do. With that in mind, I chose tonight's message so take your Bibles if you have them with you tonight and uh, I hope you have your Bible and I want you to open it to the book of 1st Samuel 1st Samuel chapter 17 verse 29 1st Samuel I'm sorry verse number one actually we're gonna start in verse number one uh, 29 is actually gonna be our key verse but I want you to get to verse one don't get ahead of me tonight I appreciate it verse number one we're gonna start there and while you're turning in your Bibles uh, let me tell you a little bit about uh, Pastor Frank. Uh, I was Pastor Frank's youth pastor when uh, we were uh, just starting out in the youth ministry. I mean, we had, I'd probably been out of school for uh, maybe two years, and uh, we came uh, up to Massachusetts, and uh, we were there in a little city called Brockton, Massachusetts, and Brockton, Massachusetts was called the Armpit of Boston. How would you like that as the name of your city? Like the Armpit of Boston. And that's what we were called. Uh, but uh, I met uh, Frank there. And I want to say two things about Pastor Frank uh, there. Number one, uh, I remember uh, distinctly about Pastor Frank is that uh, he was a pretty good basketball player at the time. Uh, now, I don't know if he still plays a lot of basketball, uh, but uh, he, he had a pretty good crossover, and uh, he was pretty good at basketball. And number two uh, thing about Frank was, man, he was so cute, man. All the girls were going after him all the time. And I, I don't know what's happened, but uh, I'm grateful for 
uh, Pastor Frank, and I remember seeing him come to the Lord Jesus Christ as a personal Lord and Savior, and making that decision in his life. I'm so proud of where he is today, and uh, I'm praying that uh, uh, in the ministry there in Cebu and all across the Philippines, that he'll continue to have an outreach and a reach to the young people. Hopefully you found uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17. We're going to read uh, the uh, first 11 verses together in 1 Samuel chapter 17, and the Bible says... Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle and were gathered together at Shokah, which belongeth to Judah, and pitched between Shokah and Azekah and in Ephesdemim. Well, that's a hard one. And Saul, and Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah. And set the battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on the one side, and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side. And there was a valley between them. And there went out a champion of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. And he had a helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of, ma- of mail, and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. And he had greaves of brass upon his legs, and a target of brass between his shoulders. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spearhead weighed 600 shekels of iron. And one bearing the shield went before him. And he stood and he cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are you come out to set your battle in array? Am not I a Philistine and he a servant to Saul? Choose you a man for you and let him come down to me. If he be able to fight with me to kill me, then will we be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, Then shall ye be our servants and serve us. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistines, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you today. Lord, I thank you for being an opportunity to have in the presence of these young people to preach the word of God. Tonight, Lord, I ask that you would work in the hearts of these young people. I pray that you would work in their lives. I pray, Lord, that you would raise up men and women to serve you, to make a difference. Lord, men who will stand up and stand out and make a difference. Lord, that's what we need in this world. And Lord, if there's anyone here in the sound of my voice that does not know the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that they'll come to know you tonight. Lord, that's my deepest desire. Lord, I pray that Christians will be strengthened, that young men will surrender to ministry, and young ladies will surrender to do God's will. In your precious holy name we pray. Amen. Young people, we live in a world today that is filled with uh, uh, people that are always oppressing and pushing you down. There are people there uh, that are there, and sometimes we become like these people, we become afraid. But we are in a society today, young people, listen to me. We need some young people who will stand up and stand out and make a difference. Say it with me together, young people. Ready? Stand up, stand out, and make a difference. One more time. Here we go. Stand up, stand out, and make a difference. All right, let's do it together one more time. I know I said one more time last time, but I'm a Baptist. We're going to keep saying it one more time. Here we go. Stand up, stand out, and make a difference. I hope that's going to be you, young person, today. You're going to have to make a decision before the time is up whether you will stand up and stand out and make a difference. 
You see, our society is filled with all types of different people. Uh, the world is going there. Uh, we read in our newspapers uh, how many times we see babies left in dumpsters, how we see uh, people uh, turning to homosexuality and, and, and perverse sins of sexuality and sexual sins. We need to be careful of those. We get into it today, and it, it's becoming normal place. And, and it's, like, it's like we don't have an impact. And young people, if you're going to do something for the Lord Jesus Christ, if you're going to make an impact in this world for the Lord, you're going to have to stand up and stand out and make a difference. Tonight I want to look at a few things that might help you to do just that. Number one, the perspective of the matter. We need to see the perspective of the matter. What was going on here? We know that this is the story of David and Goliath. David uh, and uh, the people of Israel are going to fight against the Philistines. On one side is the people of Israel. On the other side are the Philistines. Now the Philistines have a, a great captain. They have a great giant. Uh, and he comes out and he makes a challenge to, these, uh, to the people of Israel. Basically, he stands up and he says, I defy the God of Israel. I defy the people of Israel. And I challenge you. And if you come, you'll fight against me. Now what these people were looking at, what the people of Israel were looking at, was a giant. They were looking at a giant. If we were to look at him today, uh, he would stand over 10 feet tall, which would, in, 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 in English, this would be as tall as a ceiling and maybe even taller than some. He would duck to go through every single door. His arms were probably about that big around, folks. I mean, that's as big as my head is wide or bigger. And that was just one arm. And he had two of them. <laughs> yes, he was a giant of a man. His spear was so big. Uh, the top of his spear basically weighed about 300 pounds. He was a humongous man. He was a man's man. Kind of like me. A man's man. No, I'm just kidding. But you understand something. Goliath was huge. And the perspective of the people of Israel was a little bit off. Take a look at verse number 25, if you will, in your scriptures. Actually, I want you to go over to verse 24. And the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were sore afraid. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up. And it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king, will enrich him with great riches. And he will give him his daughter and make his father's house a free house in Israel. These men came together and they, they were looking at it. And David had shown up and he had seen this. Uh, can you imagine this? As David's there, they have the wrong perspective. They had the wrong, first of all, the wrong perspective. They had the wrong view of themselves. Can I tell you this? That many young people in our world today have a wrong view of themselves. They have the wrong view of themselves. And we know sometimes need to get proper perspective and not have man's view, but have God's view. We need to have not man's view, but God's view. Say that with me. We need to have not man's view, but God's view, good. We want to have God's view of who we are. And uh, these people of Israel, these soldiers that were there, these are some of the, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> some of these are the brothers of, of, of David. And these guys are, you know, David's brothers must have been some kind of specimens. As you looked at them, they... They were big, and they were biggest of them all, and the strongest. And yet David comes along, and he's just a teenager, like many of you. In fact, David, at this time, is probably about 17. The Bible says that he was of a rudy complexion, which means that uh, he, was, he, he didn't really even have a beard yet. You know, he had that 
straggle beard that just came in, you know, a few hairs there and a few hairs there. And, uh, you know, he was probably checking him out in the mirror, trying to see how big his beard was going to grow because his brother probably had a big bushy beard and he had nothing. In fact, his face was still had that pinkish hue of a young person uh, there. And he had bright red hair that was probably curly. And that's the way, by the way, if you watch my hair, I, I cut my hair just before this. But if you're a Jew, you realize this, that your hair is very curly and then when you're out in the sun it's also very red and so David probably had this big red hair and of, of, of curls and you could see him he's this just this bright-eyed kid and he's standing there staring as this giant comes over the mountain for the first time he sees him and as he the giant begins to yell out hey you send me somebody I defy God I defy Israel David is standing there, and I think he was expecting maybe his brother, he's thinking, yeah, this is going to be good. Man, he's thinking maybe my brother alive, he's going to go out there, he's just going to take his sword, he's going to take care of business. And David turned around to look, and no one was there. You know why? Because they had a wrong view of themselves. You see, their first thought must have been that they were just Israelites. See, you don't understand, we're just poor little Israelites. You don't understand, this is a giant that we're looking at here. This is something that's way bigger than we are. It's way out of our scope. It's way out of our realm. We'll never be able to handle that big giant. They just thought they were Israelites. You see, Israelites were very short people. In fact, uh, probably most of the Israelites were just slightly shorter than I am and about the same size as Pastor Frank. If that helps you at all. Uh, but he, he wasn't very, they weren't very tall. That was the average size. They were just a short group of people. They didn't even stand. Uh, a tall one would have been six foot. And they believed that uh, the king of Israel was about six feet at the time. King Saul was about six foot. That was as tall as he got. This is six foot. Look at me. This is six foot right here. Just that far above me. That's it. You're looking at a giant. Almost twice the size of you. Not only in height, but in width and muscle. I mean, he was just huge. And these guys were looking at him, and they had the wrong perspective. They were, no, we're just, we're just little old Israelites. We're short in stature. <laughs> you don't understand. I mean, these guys, these are the Philistines. These guys, they're trained to fight. Why, we're just, we're just farmers and sheep herders. We, we don't even have a real sword. All I got is a pitchfork, and, and that guy over there has a hoe. Well, what are we going to do? How are we to fight a big giant? You see, they thought maybe they were too small or not well trained. Or maybe they thought God is far away from us, God is distant, He's so far away from us. Why, we know that God helped others. Uh, he helped Elijah. He called down fire from heaven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That wasn't that long ago. Or that's actually coming up in the future. We know he's going to help some people there in the future. He's going to help others. And he, uh, maybe we look back and go, he helped Elijah. He helped those people. But those guys were looking at it and go, he helped Father Abraham. He helped Father Isaac and Jacob. But, oh, I don't know. I don't know. He helped people cross over the Jordan he helped them to get away from Egypt, but do we still have the same powerful God? Can I tell you, listen to me, young people, we need to stop looking at our stature and saying to ourselves, well, I'm just a teenager. What can I do? That's a huge thing. I can't, I can't take that on. We need to have a proper perspective of what we are. Are. And so we need to have this proper perspective. These men had the wrong perspective. They had the wrong view of themselves. And sometimes, young people, we get the wrong view of ourselves. We get this idea that we're just teenagers. What can we do? Can I tell you that God can change the world with just a few teenagers? You say, well, we're, we're, we're just young. We're, we're so young. or we're, we're not trained to do any of these things. We're not trained. 
But, well, we know there's God, man. We know that God helps Brother Frank, and he helps Pastor uh, uh, P- Peter Denisi, and he helps Mrs. Denisi. But what about, what about me? I don't know if God's going to help me. Can I, can I encourage you today? Let the same God of Pastor Frank, the same God of the disciples, The same God of Elijah, the same God of David is the same God today and he still can use you. God is not distant from us and why do we often feel like God is distant from us? I believe that this is what happens. These men of war went out to these places into the battlefields. Oh, they got busy practicing their warfare. They got busy doing other things, but they forgot to maintain a personal walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. Young people, listen to me. You need to have an intimate, personal relationship with Jesus Christ. If we're going to succeed in life, if we're going to have a proper view of God and not see that God is so far away from us, by the way, God isn't the one who's doing the moving. We are. We are. We are the ones who tend to move away from God. We forget, or we get busy with this and we get busy with that and we're busy, but we forget to take time in the word of God we forget to take time to open God's word and read it and have it fill us and be a part of us we forget to take time to pray we forget to take time to 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 do the things that God wants us to do and we get involved with other things and it's okay to be busy but sometimes we forget about God and we find ourselves distant from him and then when we think we need him the most he's not close to us because we're not close to him these men had the wrong perspective. They thought, oh, we're just short. We have the wrong view of ourselves. We're we're not trained. God is far away. But they weren't only that. The Israelite soldiers had the wrong view of the problem. (laughs) They had the wrong view of the problem. They said, do you see? Do you, don't you see? Look at verse 25. And the men of Israel... (coughs) <coughs> said, have you, have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up. Hey, they said, did you, did you see this man? They're talking to David. Hey, have you seen him? <laughs> haven't, you, haven't you seen? This guy's huge. This problem is way too big for us. You listen to me, young people. Sometimes you're going to get into your heart and mind that the problem is is too big. But can I encourage you tonight that some of you are going to believe that your problem is too small for God. And I'm here to tell you tonight, is there anything too hard for God? If God can speak the universe into existence, if he can open up his mouth and speak the worlds into place, is there anything too hard for God? Remember, he would ask the same people, he would ask the people of Israel that same question. Is there anything too hard for me? Is it, is it too hard for me? If there's nothing too big for God, young people, listen to me. Don't get confused about your seemingly small problems. God is concerned about the small things. God gets concerned about the small things as well. And young people, you listen to me. God wants you to know tonight that God can take care of big things as well as the little things. I often think of it like this, young people. If God can take the worst event in all of history, which was Jesus Christ dying on the cross, and He can take that worst event ever and turn it into the greatest event that ever took place in all of history, what's too big for God? There's nothing that God cannot do. And these people of Israel had the wrong view of their problem. They said this problem is way too big. 
And so they ran and they hid. Look at what it says at the end of uh, verse 24. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were sore afraid. Can you imagine as David was standing there and he's watching that day, his brothers, and he's, he's, staring, uh, uh, he's seeing this giant and he's thinking, yes, my brothers are going to do something. And then David kind of turns around like, where did everybody go? And he finally finds his oldest brother who's, who's hiding behind a rock, you know. He's hiding behind this rock. Oh, do you think, David, David, get over here. Don't you see the giant? Get, get over here. And, and David looks at his brother and says, hey, aren't you going to go do something? David, shh, shh, come here. You see, the bra- problem was too big. And they believe that someone else should take care of this problem. Even King Saul, who was the tallest of them all, by the way, at that point, he was head and shoulders, the Bible says, above everyone. He was probably about six foot, six foot one, maybe, uh, as far as that goes, in height. And uh, he was probably, uh, like I said, he was probably about that much taller than me, but he still would have been taller than any of the other people there. He was also the king and the leader. He should have been out there doing it. And he was in his tent going, (laughs) oh my goodness, this thing is so big, I I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do. You ever felt like you just don't know what to do? You feel afraid. And I'm here to tell you that that fear becomes our enemy, and these people were afraid. And and so they wanted to, to, to take their problems and said, somebody else can deal with it, somebody else can do it. It can't be me. They had the idea, those people, they're picking on us. They're just so big. Brother John, you don't understand. We face some huge problems. Coronavirus, this thing is way too big for us. It's not too big for God. It's not too big for God. You see, fear leads to shame. And this causes them to flee. Can I tell you that if you allow fear to reign in your life, when you look at a problem in a wrong way, in the wrong perspective, you're going to go, it's too big. And you're going to try to run and you're going to try to hide from the problem. The problem is, is those problems don't go away. They just keep coming back day after day after day and making the challenge, come and face me, come and face me. And what happens if we never face that giant? What happens if we never face that fear is we end up living our lives in fear. And young people, it's hard to accomplish anything in fear. Why? Because we're expecting somebody else to take care of the problem. We're expecting that uh, it's going to just go away on its own or, or that if we hide, it won't see us and it'll go away. You see, this is the perspective. But I want you to notice also David's view. David's view of the problem. Look at verse number 26. And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth the Philistine, and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine, that he should defy the armies of the living God? (laughs) Oh, I love David. David, this little rudy-faced teenage boy, He's standing there. He looks at his brothers. He looks at the men, those mighty men with their spears and their pitchforks. Those guys who could, he knew his brother, man, his brother could lift boulders. Man, he was David. All he could carry around was a sling and a couple of stones. And he's got a different perspective. He has a different view. I'll tell you why. Because David was close to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because David was close to God. David kept a relationship with God. While he was out tending the sheep, he was praising God, making music and melody to God and thinking about God and how God was that. And he kept God close to him. And his philosophy, his his view of it was, But what shall be done? 
to the man that killeth the Philistine and taketh away the reproach. In other words, how dare this man defy the armies of God? What do we know, young people? Listen to me. David said, hey, he's not supposed to do that. He can't get away with that. we got to stand up. And maybe he looked at his brother, come on, stand up. Come on, men, stand up. And I'm here to tell you today, I don't know how big your problems are. I don't know how small they may be. But I'm here to tell you today, stand up. And David stood up and he said, why should he defy God? Why should he defy the men of God? God is on our side. God is with us. He says, I'll go. You see, David did this. He said, I'll stand up. I'm going to stand out. And I'm going to make a difference. You see, he had a proper view of who God was. He knew that God was big enough to handle the problem. We'll see this in a few minutes. But he also knew that that problem was over there and he wasn't about to let it continue to stand in the way of the things of God. And I think sometimes, young people, we uh, allow ourselves, because we have a wrong perspective, we have a wrong view, we allow things just to kind of go by and slide by in our own lives and in the lives of others, and the lives of our countrymen, and the lives of where we live. And we just kind of think, you know, that's a big problem. I'm, not, I'm just a teenager. I'm just a young person. What can I do? I'll tell you what you can do, teenager. You can stand up and stand out and make a difference. Not only did he have, we have this perspective of the matter, but I want you to see the principle of the matter. The principle of the matter. In verse 9, we started in there and we finished in verse 26. And the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to them that killeth him. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard uh, when they spake unto them. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David. And he said, Why canest, camest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride. And the naughtiness of thine heart, for thou art come down, that thou mightest see the battle. And David said, What have I now done? Is there not a cause? And he turned from him toward another, and spake after the same manner. And the people answered him again after the former manner. In other words, David kept turning and saying, Is there not a cause? a cause. Listen to me, people. Listen to me, young people. Listen to me. I'm asking you tonight. I'm asking you tonight, is there not a cause? We need some young people to stand up and stand out. Why? Because there is a cause. There is a God in heaven. Amen? There's a God in heaven, and there's a cause to stand up and stand out against tyranny. There's a cause to stand up and stand out against sin. And yet, young people, things can get in the way. Look at verse number 28. And Eliab, this is his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto them, this is David's oldest brother, spake unto the man, and Eliab anger was kindled against David. By the way, listen, let me tell you something, young people. Listen to me. When you determine that you're going to stand up and stand out, there are going to be people who don't like it. You listen to me, there are going to be people who do not like it. <laughs> and you're going to be surprised at who it is sometimes. Sometimes it's going to be some of those people that are right there in your church. Some of those people who are sitting right next to you. They're not going to like it if you want to stand up and stand out and make a difference. If you want to start doing what the Bible says and start obeying God's word. Uh, young people, sometimes it will surprise us who it is that stands against us. I don't think David thought, well, my, my older brother's going to be like, <laughs> my older brother's going to be like, yeah, he'll have my back. I'll be right there with you. But that's not what happened. You see, his older brother said, what's wrong with you, boy? What do you think you're doing here? Who do you think you are? Basically, that's what he was saying. 
You think you're so high and mighty? Why, you're just a little sheep farmer. You see, and that's the other thing. When you decide to stand up and stand out and make a difference, let me tell you, they're going to just kind of point out your weaknesses. That's what the devil likes to do too. Boy, he likes to turn and find your weakness. Can I tell you, young people, that doesn't change the fact that we just need to bolster her up and say, I'm going to stand up, I'm going to stand out, and I'm going to make a difference. By the way, David, at this point, he didn't even know if he was going to make a difference. He just knew that he was going to stand up. And he would stand out. You see, he had a principle. He said, is there not a cause? Is there not something to, worth fighting for? Is there not something worth standing for? My dad used to tell me this. He said, son, you've got to stand for something or you're going to just fall for anything. Well, young people, you listen to me. We've all got to stand up for the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to stand out for God and make a difference in our society. We need to make a difference in the people around us. But what gets in our way is our own pride. You see, pride keeps us from the principle of the matter. It, causes, it keeps us from seeing the cause. It keeps us from seeing the cause. You see, uh, he wanted to point at David and say, David, you're proud. But David said, I, I'm just a shepherd. I know that. But you're, 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 a, you're a fighter. You're a soldier. Go get him. <laughs> Eliab, proud, standing up towards David. Oh, you're better than us. What pride does is causes anger at those who truly want to do something about it. You see, people are going to get angry with you because you want to do something. And when you start, see, by the way, if you start seeing people, young people, you listen to me, mark my words, if you see people getting angry at you because you're doing the right thing, then you know you're doing the right thing. <laughs> stand up. Stand out. And make a difference. You see, pride causes anger at those who truly want to do something. Pride causes shame because we know we are not strong enough to do the right thing. You see, what happens is they get angry. And he was angry. Why? Because he didn't have the strength. He didn't have what it took to do the right thing. He said, I couldn't stand. And so he's in a, in a place of shame. His own younger brother, his youngest brother, by the way, the little guy, the guy who didn't shave, whose muscles were upside down. You know what I mean when I say upside down? When he's flexed, his muscles went and didn't go like this, you know, like some of yours. And David, you see, pride will keep us and make us angry, pride causes us to be shameful. By the way, if you find yourself being angry at somebody else, you're going to realize it's your own pride that's making you angry when they're doing right. You're going to realize that it's your own shame that's causing you to, to, to do it because you realize you're not strong enough to do the right thing. And what happens, it causes us to shirk our responsibility onto someone else. Take a look at verse number 33. We're going to skip down here right to verse 33 because Saul is going to send David. Look at verse 33. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and, a, and he a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept thy his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him, and smote him with a, and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by the beard, and smote him, and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. You see, David keeps coming back to the cause. Is there not a cause? He's defied those armies of the living God. He's going against God. Young people, listen to me. We've got to get ourselves in that place where we say, we're not allowing God to be defied. We want to stand up and make a difference. 
David said, Moreover, the Lord hath delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, and he will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine. And Saul, had, listen, and Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. You see, it, when we uh, are there and we have pride, it'll cause us to shirk our responsibility to someone else. Why? That way, if something goes wrong, it's not my fault. I mean, <laughs> Saul's the biggest and the strongest, but he couldn't go out there and fight Goliath because if something went wrong, then it'd all fall on Saul. I mean, the whole nation falls into slavery because of Saul. Now, if David goes out and fights Goliath, well, you know, this is some silly teenager. He shouldn't have done that. Should have known better. Maybe we get to a point where maybe we can buy our way out. And Saul, he eventually says to David, hey, listen, why don't you take my armor? Can you imagine as David began, you know, David, he's smaller than most of the men there. He's just a teenage boy. He's not a man of war. His muscles are upside down, remember? And Saul says to him, hey, why don't you, you take my armor? Now remember, Saul's bigger than everybody. You know, can you imagine when they put the helmet on David and he's like looking around? <laughs> he can spin it around. Roo, roo, roo. That helmet's just turning on. Him, wobble, wobble. Sounds like a bell. Dong, dong, dong. You see, that Saul's trying to shirk his responsibility. So, hey, I'll just buy my way out. Hey, you take my armor. I, I'm a good guy. You take my armor. But the opposite of pride is humility. You see, David says, the cause is just. In verse number 37, David said, the, the said, Moreover, the Lord hath delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, and he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. Hey, the cause is just. In verse 36, he's defying the living God. The cause is just. I'll go. By the time he gets to verse 37, he says, My God is able. I'll go. Listen to me, young people. We need some people who will stand up and stand out and make a difference. David said, I'll go. Why? Because he had a cause. How's the cause? You see, humility sees the cause and says the cause is just. I'll go. Humility says, my God is able. I'll go. And you listen to me, young Young people, you need to stand up and say, the cause is just, I'll go. My God is able, I'll go. But I want you to know that not only is there the perspective that was wrong, not only does it matter the principle of the matter, but I want you to know that there's a prize of the matter. There's a prize of the matter. Look at verses 42. And when the Philistines looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. And the Philistines said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with a staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air, and to the beasts of the field. I want you to notice something there. One of the prizes of it was David's stature. He was small, man. He was small. He was rudy faced, it says. and He made the enemy mad. He humiliated the enemy. He comes out there, you know, he had already cast off Saul's stuff. He said to Saul, I can't wear this armor. He said, it's too much for me. I don't even know how to use it. He said, I'm just going to take my little old trusty slingshot and I'm going to take a couple of stones. That's what I know how to do. By the way, that's very important. Young people, sometimes we're worried that we don't know what to do or we don't know something. Hey, no, do what you know to do. Do what you know how to do. David didn't know how to use a sword. But he knew how to use a sling. You, you know, you might not know every verse of the Bible, but you know enough, uh, enough verses that you could tell somebody about Jesus. You might not know 
maybe two verses in all of Scripture, but you can tell somebody two verses. You can stand up and stand out and make a difference with what you already have in your hand, what you already know. Young people, I encourage you tonight, take this time. I want you to stand up and stand out and make a difference. Because the prize matters. Listen, the prize of the matter is that uh, the stature humiliated the enemy. He looked at him. He said, man, you're small. You come to me with a stick and a slingshot? Who do you think you are? Now the enemy is angry. You see, David's boldness is about to anger uh, Goliath. Look at verse 45. And then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. Sometimes we need to stand up and stand out and make a difference for God and not allow others to defy God. And David's boldness angers the Philistine so much. If you read 46, David continues on in verse 47. Look at what he says. Well, just read it. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcass of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. Verse 48, And it came to pass when the Philistine arose, he came and drew nigh to, da- to meet David. And David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand into his bag and took the hence a stone, I'm reading very fast, and slang it, and smote the Philistine in his forehead, and the stone sunk into his forehead, and he fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistines with a sling and with a stone, and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David, therefore David ran, and stood upon the Philistine, and took his sword, and drew it out of the sheath thereof, and slew him, and cut off his head wherewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. David's boldness angers the enemy so much so that he comes and he begins to run at David. But we see that David's dependence on God defeats the enemy. You listen to me, young people. It's time for us to stand up and stand out. But when we do, our dependence should not be on us. It should be on God. We should be able to stand up and stand out in the boldness of the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to stand up and stand out in the face of the enemy. And we need to stand up and stand out because not we win, but God wins. And I love what David says there. Look at what he says at the end of verse 46. That all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Many of you are in the Philippines tonight. Some of you need to stand up and stand out so that the people in the Philippines can know that there is a God in the Philippines. The prize of the matter is his stature humiliates the enemy. His boldness angers the enemy. And David's dependence on God defeats the enemy. Young people, listen to me. You can make a difference. If you will stand up and stand out for the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be surprised at how the enemy eventually will fall and flee from you. I'm encouraging you tonight, young people, listen to me. We live in a world today that wants you to be conquered by fear and conquered by the cannots and the I cannot or I will not. And I'm asking you tonight to stand up and stand out and make a difference. Would you tonight, Christian, 
say to me, Preacher, Brother John, I'm going to stand up. I've been sitting for too long. I've been hiding for too long. I want to stand up. I want to stand out. And I want to make a difference right where I live. You can do it, young people. You listen to me. With God, all things are possible. Say it with me one more time. Stand up. Stand out and make a difference. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, I come to you. Right now, Lord, there's some young people who need to stand up and stand out and make a difference. There's some young people who need to surrender to the call of ministry and say, Lord, you want me to be a preacher? I'm going to stand up and stand out. There may be some tonight that don't know that that's what you want, but Lord, they said, Lord, if that's what you want, I'll stand up and stand out. Lord, there's some young people who've lived their Christian life in fear. Lord, and sometimes this doesn't seem like it's without cause, but Lord, I pray that you would remind them that you are the God of heaven. And Lord, that the victory is yours. And the battle can be won if they'll stand up and stand out and do the effort to make a difference. Oh, that we might have young people tonight stand up and stand out and make a difference. Lord, I pray that you'd help us. I'm going to turn it over to Brother Frank and he can end this however he wants. But you listen to me, young people, one more thing. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, he's waiting for you. There is a God in heaven and he wants to save you. Would you make that right tonight? Maybe you need to go to your pastor. You need to go to somebody. But you need to make yourself accountable. Say, I want to stand up. I want to stand out. And I want to make a difference. Or I need to get saved. Would you do that tonight? Brother Frank.